So Doug, big data, is this the end of privacy? No, I don't think it's at all the end of privacy. Uh, I think we've, we've got some challenges. Um, uh, people don't always trust uh, that their privacy is respected. Uh, and long term, that's not sustainable. We need to, to trust the people we give our data to. Um, you give somebody your location, uh, you want them to, to use it uh, in the ways that uh, you expect and not, at, not in some other ways. And so um, uh, I, think, I think everybody needs to start paying attention to this more. Yeah, so you, you, you mentioned in the ways that you expect. Now, for some kinds of data, it seems to me that that use is purely personal. You know, I gave you, for example, my shopping preferences, Amazon. I want you to make recommendations for me, but I don't want you to give those to other people, right, to target ads at me or whatever. Uh, on the other hand, I'm giving Google my location both to give me directions, but now they've introduced this new idea uh, that collectively all of that information will help them make better traffic predictions, for example. And I go, yeah, I'm willing to make that trade-off. I wonder sometimes if the privacy debate should be reframed uh, using the word you used earlier, which is trust. Isn't it really a debate about trust and how we increase trust in the people who have our data? Definitely. I mean, I think we're used to um, uh, giving giving things to other people and, and trusting that they'll they'll give them back. Um, uh, you know, banks, for example. Um, but we've got uh, this large regulatory infrastructure um, that that makes sure that they will do that. You know, there's laws to to, to make sure that. Um, I think it's harder to develop um, really rigid laws about data to say, you know, location data can be used for this and this, but not that. Um, I think if you do that, you end up um, uh, preventing a lot of what could be useful applications. Like you mentioned traffic, which might not have been thought of um, uh, when location data was, was first gathered. Um, so I think that the key, the linchpin really is transparency. Um, you need to know um, what folks have done with your data. Um, they need to tell you everything they've done, and if they do something new with it, they need to start telling you that. Um, and that gives us the, the, the leg to stand on. We can then protest and say, no, that's not acceptable. Um, right. and, and they and need to do it in plain language as opposed to uh, some obscure terms of service that you can't yeah. read or understand no. and that you're just required to click through. I mean, I think most of those click through terms of services aren't even legally binding because people don't read them. I think yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, you mentioned earlier uh, the notion of audit. Mm -hmm. Uh, what kind of audit rights should we have on the data that we're used, uh, the, of our data that's used? Um, I mean, I think you, sh you, you have the right to know what data of yours is held uh, and, and or has been collected um, and, and how it's been used. Um, uh, in, in Europe, they're, they're talking a lot about this, uh, the right to be forgotten, um, uh, where you can re retroactively um, uh, say that data needs to be removed. And I think that technically that can be really hard in some cases. Uh, in other cases, I think it's entirely reasonable. So I think it, it's going to, it's going to, we'll see how that settles out. You know, it's sort of interesting though, that right to be forgotten is very easily uh, misused because there are people who, for example, have done something that should not be forgotten and, uh, in, you know, can they invoke the right to be forgotten, uh, you know, to protect themselves yeah. from people knowing about their crimes or, uh, from knowing that they're dangerous or, you know, right. or, or, or that they actually said something uh, that they now, uh, you know, regret. Now, yes, you're a, you're a kid and you did have a youthful indiscretion, right to be forgotten makes sense. Uh, you know, you are, uh, you know, a public figure who said something and now you want to deny it. Oh, I want that to be forgotten. Uh, slippery slope there. Exactly. So I, I think there's not a blanket um, uh, right to be forgotten that, that, that I think is, is, is a good thing. But I mean, we're also used to it in um, things like credit history. Um, that you know, folks, if they're going to give you a loan, are only uh, allowed to look back a certain amount of time. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we have um, statute limitations in, in various laws. Um, so we, we already have a lot of precedent um, for things being legally forgotten. Um, uh, yeah, and so not that's a really good point, that there are different kinds of forgetting. And uh, in fact, we need a lot of nuance in how we start to think about what kind of regulations we put on data uh, to increase our trust that it's being used correctly. Right. And I think the, the you know, Google's, uh, you know, uh, lost this lawsuit, um, but their reaction um, is actually um, really helping us to have this debate to say these things that, that you know, have been deleted from Google search results, we wish were still there and they were deleted for the wrong reason, whereas these things, that's fine. 
Uh, that was a, that was a, that was a good thing to delete, and they were there for good reason. So.